Six Flags, a company of strong traditions. One tradition in particular being terrible decision making. Going all the way back from when they sold themselves to Time Warner and that blew up in their face from back in the early 2000s where they spent an obscene amount of money on new roller coasters only for them to go bankrupt a few years later. And now to today, who gladly the new CEO, Salim Basul, is keeping the tradition alive and well. Oh, hi, Salim. Hey, Salim. You see, last year in 2022, the theme park industry went off. I mean, there was an extreme amount of pent up demand after 2020, 2021, where most people didn't visit theme parks, whether because of COVID or because of shutdowns people just weren't able to go out to the parks. So there was a lot of pent up demand and it resulted in record breaking revenues and attendance for most of these theme park companies. The reason why I say most of is because Six Flags was not a part of the bunch. You see, Salim joined Six Flags at the beginning of 2022 and he had a brand new strategy that he decided to unveil in a year that really should have been easy money. Salim comes in and says, no, we're going with a different idea. And here was the idea to turn Six Flags into a premium destination, like Disney or Universal. I mean, that sounds great, but surely that's gotta be like a decades long plan. I mean, clearly these parks need a lot of investment if you're gonna get them up to that level. Surely you won't just do something drastic and say they're premium overnight, right? Uh You're despicable. Right, yeah, so Salim's strategy to make them premium was just jack up the price. (laughs) In his eyes, The parks were already a premium experience and all he had to do was just price them up and people would come. Unfortunately, didn't work out for Slim. It blew up in his face. Attendance dropped like a rock. And of course, revenue came down and net income came down. And while everyone else in their field was raking in the cash, Six Flags had a nightmare year. Compared to their number one competitor, Cedar Fair, they were squashed like a bug. It seemed like This was a moment in time that we would look back on years from now and say, Six Flags really dropped the ball there and that's the reason why they ended up in the dumpster. So now, a year later, shockingly, Salim is with the company. I say shockingly because Six Flags tracker with CEOs is like they drop them like flies. And yet, despite putting himself in the bonehead hall of fame, Salim has somehow managed to earn himself a second chance. So, now that we're in 2023, A year removed from that awful year. What has Salim managed to put together to try and get Six Flags back on track and perhaps avoid the awful situation that seemed like they were on track for at the end of 2022? Oh, hi, Salim. There's my friend. Well, I could give you two pieces of things that we already know he did. Well, obviously one, he dropped the prices. Obviously, that didn't work. So the base prices had to come back down. Now, they aren't lower than they were before. In fact, they are still a little bit higher at the base level, at least, when compared to 2019, that is. But the reason why I keep saying base level is because he's had an absurd amount of sales, literally from October of 2022 through May of this year. There have been sales on season passes the whole time. It's been nonstop. It's actually been insane the amount of sales that have been going on. The question now for Six Flags though, is have they burned their customers, right? Do people even know that the prices have dropped, right? Do people even wanna come back? I mean, obviously there's not a whole lot of new rides opening up this year across the Six Flags chain. So are people even gonna come back even if prices have dropped, especially now, you know, year removed from 2022, the demand for theme parks is not as high as it previously had been. So though this seems like a great strategy on the surface to kind of try and bring back guests, is it gonna work? I don't know. To give us an idea of how things are going, we now have Six Flags quarter two results, which is for April through June, which is basically the beginning of peak season for the Six Flags parks. So given that, it's gonna give us a pretty good idea of how Six Flags is gonna perform for the rest of the year. So Salim, balls in your court, let's see what you got. Oh my god, minus 55% on net income? What happened? Now, you guys know, I'm perhaps among the most cynical when it comes to Six Flags in their current state, but even I had not foreseen such a god-awful earnings report. Like, no joke, when I first saw this, my breath was taken away. I, I, I actually could not fathom that these numbers could have been that bad. 
I mean, if the 2022 numbers was a nightmare year, what does that make 2023 so far? Listen, folks, we, we gotta get to the bottom of this. How did net income fall this far? It's just obscene. It makes no sense. Oh, hi, Salim. Looks like your riot is not working. But luckily, this is not necessarily the nightmare situation that we had uh, envisioned when we first saw that number. Six Flags has a at least somewhat reasonable excuse for why that happened. You see, they made a $38 million adjustment up in their self-insurance reserves. What in the world does that mean? Well, essentially what it is is you take $38 million that you would have had in cash otherwise, and you go ahead and you put it over into basically what's a, essentially a different bank account in a certain extent that can only be used towards paying off insurance claims. So when Six Flags gets sued and there's a lawsuit or something like that and they have to pay out a certain amount, they could take out of that and it doesn't affect future quarterly reports. This is so that way any sort of settlements or accidents that happen can be separate from the rest of the performance of the company. Now what's interesting is that they claim this is because uh, payouts from juries are going up and interest is going up and all this other stuff that you know means they have to put more money away, put more money to the side just in case you know insurance risk comes up, right? But it's kind of odd because they claim this is an industry-wide thing even though None of their competitors have cited this. None of their competitors have had a massive increase in their self-insurance reserves. Right? We haven't seen Disney do it. We haven't seen Universal do it. We haven't seen Sierra Fair do it. We haven't seen SeaWorld do it. None of these guys are doing this. So why did Six Flags have to incur such a massive increase? It's just bad management by their part. They just forget to have to increase it over time while everyone else is doing it. Like maybe a couple of million dollars at a time. They don't have to report it on their earnings report, at least not in this massive fashion. Well, not exactly. You look back at 2021, Six Flags had to pay out a settlement of $36 million to guests of Six Flags Great America in Illinois. Mind you, that was right before Salim took over, started firing people to cut down staff, and replaced people up in the top to get in his own guys in that upper management position. So I think it's actually pretty likely that this was just kind of lost in the weeds. Like people didn't realize or they forgot that this payout happened and they just never were making those small incremental payments into the self-insurance reserve to get it back up to fill up what had already been paid out by this deal. So they say, oh, well, it wasn't because of a settlement or a claim that happened that we had to raise the price of this, which is technically true, but this $38 million adjustment is not because of increased payouts or anything like that. It's because they just haven't filled their reserves to make up for this payout that they had to make in 2021. So good news and bad news here. It means that, hey, the Q2 earnings numbers, not as bad as we initially thought. Yippee! However, it also means that there's still some uh, mismanagement going on up top because uh, this sort of adjustment just shouldn't have had to have happened out of nowhere, right? So when you ignore that awful, awful, awful net income number, and you look at the rest of this earnings report, it's not terrible. It's not particularly good either, though. Um, I mean, revenues being up only 2%, eh, eh. And I mean, attendance, you know, despite dropping, you know, those prices so much and having so many discounts, only a 6% increase year over year. Uh, you know, mind you, from a year ago when, you know, attendance was down like 25%, I mean, you're still ages away from your attendance you know, back in 2019. I mean, even 2021, you're still behind that. So, uh, you know, it's it's not not very promising stuff here. Six Flags claims that year to date season pass sales are up 50%, which, you know, given the discounts makes sense. But when you look at the attendance numbers, it doesn't quite make sense, right? How can attendance only be up 6% if season pass sales are up 50%? Well, the reason why, as they explain later in the earnings call, um, apparently, new season pass holders is only up by 2%, meaning that 48% of season pass holders from last year did not return as season pass holders for this year. Not a great sign that people are responding well to your investment, Salim. Stop saying that they are, because clearly they're not. You don't have that sort of turnover in your season pass holders if that's the case. A big excuse that Six Flags used to try and lessen the blow of these disappointing numbers was to say, oh, the weather was bad. It was too hot, it was raining, all this other stuff. And it's like, listen, every other theme park also said the same thing, right? SeaWorld, Cedar Fair, they all said, oh, weather was bad, weather was bad. And it's like, that might have been true, but it's like, how many other years has weather been bad? 
I mean, literally a year ago in Q2 2022, they made the same excuse. They said weather was bad, weather was bad. And it's like, I'm getting sick and tired of the excuse. Weather's gonna be bad every year going forward, I guess. So it's like, just stop bringing it up. Okay, I don't even care. I don't care. There could have been hurricanes every single day. I literally do not care because you use this excuse every single time. I'm sick of it. Now, one good thing to note, however, is they did give a little bit of guidance on the July numbers. And apparently, attendance for that month is up 11%, which is better than the 6% that we've seen in Q2. So, hey, you know, it seems that maybe things are tracking a little bit better. Perhaps, maybe, as the summer's gone on, more people have, you know, decided to take Six Flags up on those season pass offers. Perhaps this attendance increase can continue through August and even through September and October when Fright Fest is going on, of course, one of Six Flags' most popular events. So even though this quarter was, you know, meh, meh at best, at best meh, you know, it could have been terrible, right? I mean, certainly when you look at those numbers in the first place, it looks like it's the end of the world, right? But perhaps there's something to actually be optimistic about when it comes to Six Flags. I know. <laughs> it sounds crazy to say, you know, you, you never should get your hopes up about Six Flags, but take a listen to this. Going back into 24 and 25, we're going back to putting new rides in. So a lot of our CapEx will be on exciting rides Baby, that gives us thrills. Uh, we need to go back and we're retiring a bunch of rides that have high maintenance. This is what fun is about, and then we're replacing them God, with very exciting, exciting thrilling rides. Uh, state of the art, new rides. We're putting a lot of money into this. Second, I could tell you, the other thing we need to discuss is our ride downtime. And part of addressing the ride downtown is going back and looking at resolving issues uh, and maintenance and upgrading um, maybe trains and making sure that our uh, parts are fully stocked to make sure that we are always predicting and making sure that we're predicting our maintenance and making sure the rides are up. So it's a combination of maintenance, but it's not the biggest part. The biggest part is the thrill ride. Oh, <laughs> Salim, you're, you're gonna make me tear up here, man. Th that's, that's amazing to hear. I'm so glad that Six Flags is finally getting back to uh, the roots, the thing that actually makes them exciting and interesting to visit, and that's the rides. It's always been the rides. It's never been about the food. It's never been about uh, how nice the trees look or anything like that, you know? Like, that all stuff helps, right? But at the end of the day, it's the rides. And that's really where we gotta be spending your money and I'm glad to see the Sleem understands that. In 2024, capital expenditures, basically the amount of money they're going to invest in the parks, is gonna go up to between 200 to 220 million with another increase in 2025 to 230 to 250. What is this money getting spent on? Well, it's new rides, folks. New rides are coming back to the Six Flags Parks. Well, isn't that a nice change of pace from, of course, back when Salim started, his game plan was, let's spend as little money as possible and let's spend it on like new flower beds and shades and benches and stuff like that. That'll get people to come to the parks, right? And it didn't quite work out. But now he understands that new rides, not only do they improve the park experience and, you know, increase your capacity, lower wait times, but they also actually bring new people to the park. They're great marketing material. So finally, Six Flags is getting back to their roots. Sleem has finally realized what company he is running here. I mean, Sleem even said, Thrill Rides is our DNA. This is a year removed from when he was saying, oh, we gotta target families. We gotta be family focused. And it's like, well, Thrill Rides aren't that. And now he's realized, oh wait, this is what Six Flags is actually good at. He realized, oh, I'm not in charge of Disney. I'm charge of Six Flags. I mean, it's kind of crazy that he didn't know that coming in, but now it seems like Sleem understands what Six Flags strengths are, who their target audience is, and he's actually committing to investing in things that this audience actually wants, at least verbally. Now, let's be honest, right? It's great and all that you're getting back to heavily investing in throw rides, but you can't just say, all right, we're doing that and that's it. Like you have to have an actual game plan, an actual strategy, because which parks get new rides? And when do they receive them? And what rides are they? It's important to make sure you're giving the right ride to the right park at the right time. Because for instance, right now, a park that really needs something is Great Adventure. 
this is your second most attended park. It is one of your bread winners. And yet, it is losing the battle in the New York City, Philadelphia area. Not only is more competition come to the area with Nickelodeon Universe up by American Dream coming to the area and taking away a lot of that New York City attendance because it's way closer to the city than Great Adventure is, but also now Hershey Park for the first time in God knows how long has passed Great Adventure in attendance because it has received an absurd amount of investment in top tier rides as well as just a bunch of infrastructure and new shops and restaurants. I mean, the park is completely different than it was even just five years ago. It's actually crazy. And yet in that time, all Great Adventure's gotten is Jersey Devil. Not to say Jersey Devil's bad, but it's not enough to overcome what their competition has been doing. And it's no surprise that Great Adventure is falling behind. And really, when it's one of your biggest money makers, Six Flags cannot afford for that to happen. So yes, there might be some bottom feeders, like a Six Flags St. Louis, like a Six Flags America, that parks that have not received significant meaningful investment in years, that might need rides on the surface, but really, if you invest in a new ride at one of those parks, it's not gonna go as far as investing in a new ride at Great Adventure, for instance. So hey, uh, you want me to completely spell it out for you, where you should invest in, what you should invest in? Hey, pay me, but, Otherwise, all I'm gonna say is just figure it out, man. Make sure that you're giving the right ride to the right park. It's that simple. But nonetheless, I do still think Six Flags is headed in the right direction. And you know what? I think for the first time, despite you know the fact that this quarter was eh, you know, well, it was all right. Uh, despite that, I think for the first time I'm actually on the Salim bandwagon. <laughs> Oh, uh, and then he wants to say he wants to raise prices again. Oh, well, okay, well, you know, screw you. Screw you, buddy. No, I'm kidding. But seriously, <laughs> understandable you want to raise prices again because obviously you have discounted them severely. But this time he understands, hey, we got to invest in the parks. We got to make our parks actually significantly better uh, if we're going to raise the prices. And, you know, I'm totally for that, right? If you're actually going to make your parks better, you're going to improve the ride lineups, then, hey, I think you can warrant, you know, asking for a better price, but don't just raise the prices without doing anything like you did last year, Salim, all right? Keep that in mind, learn your lesson, buddy. So when you combine this new thrill ride focus strategy with the price increases expected to come in the future, Salim still expects that Six Flags will reach their goal of 25 to 27 million guests annually by 2025. And you know what? Maybe that's still a little bit optimistic, but I'm a believer. I'm a believer that Six Flags can pull themselves from the rut. Because really, I mean, you look a year ago, like that game plan was never going to work. And if they had stuck with it, if they had stuck to their guns, which they were claiming they were gonna do a year ago, mind you, they were saying, oh, we are, we are with the strategy to the bitter end. Well, they've gone back on that. And I'm glad they have because really that strategy was never going to pay off. It was only gonna result in disaster, but Salim, he earned himself a second chance, and this time he is making the most of it. And you know what? I'm excited for the first time in maybe, I don't even know, in three years? Maybe for the first time I'm actually excited about the future of Six Flags. You did hear today on how we are innovating across every part of our business, from culture, digital training, revenue management, guest-facing technologies, immersive experiences, rides, beautification, food service, retail, and much more. Success requires not just leveraging your strengths, but also taking risks, overcoming challenges, and learning from failure, evolving your vision, and sometimes reinventing yourself. That is true for both our organization and our leadership. We are excited about our momentum. On behalf of the Six Flags team, we appreciate your continued support and the support of our shareholders and investors, our guests and fans, our suppliers, our bankers, and most important, the support of our team and our employees, who without them, nothing could have happened. We have many exciting events lined, lined up for the second half of the season, including Fry Fest, Kids Boo Fest, October Fest, and Holiday in the Park. We still have 40% of our revenues coming still so far. And we hope to see you at all those events this year. Have a great day and we look forward to speaking with you next quarter. Thank you. 
Dude, Salim, sign me up, man. That was hype. That was a goaded speech. That would have been the first time I've heard Salim sound like an actual true blue leader. That was awesome, man. All right. Hey, you know what? Let's do this, Salim. Put your head down. Nose to the grindstone. Let's make the right decisions. I have faith for the first time. Just when it seemed like things could not get worse, it seemed like at the beginning of this quarter, things did get worse. Until we read into it, we understood the game plan, we understood the assignment, and now we know. Hey, it might not be all bad from here. In fact, we might be heading in an upward trajectory for Six Flags for the first time since perhaps 2019. And that's an exciting thing to think about if you are a theme park fan. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Is Six Flags on the right path to get themselves sorted out and back to being who they were, you know, in the 2010s? Or perhaps maybe even better than they've ever been. Let me know if you believe in Salim or if you still are a Salim doubter. I wouldn't blame you to be quite honest. But anyways, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.